Every time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Reseller Show, episode number 34. My name's Andy Lawrence. And my name's Kev Blackburn. How are y'all doing this evening? Sorry for uh, a few minutes on the drag for the live show. If you're waiting for us patiently, thank you for hanging around for us. But uh, that's where it goes. Sometimes it takes a minute to get this stuff up and running. But uh, ready to go this evening. How are you doing, Mr. Kevin Blackburn? I'm doing really well, thank you, Andy. I'm really, really busy. This warehouse is starting to get more and more busy every single week. You can tell that there's a Q3 brewing. <laughs> Good news. Good news. That's uh, that's always good news when we hear that. How's everyone else been? Let me get the uh, let's get the chat up and see who we've got in this evening. Uh, that's something I haven't done yet. It always takes a second for the live to come through, doesn't it? And to get notifications. It does. It does. But it's exciting. I mean, we are we are at the the halfway mark of the year now. Well, we're just coming up towards the end of Q2. Mm -hmm. And um, Super exciting. This is this is the time of year where um, all us veterans, all us that are committed to do this every single month of the year, whether it's Q3 or Q1, we're here every single month. And um, now we'll start to see the, uh, the, the cavemen coming out. Uh, just just to get themselves involved in the action but we're gonna we're gonna be primed we're gonna be ready we're gonna be uh, we're gonna have our system up and running we are raring to go and we are raring to uh, reap some rewards this q3 q4 um yeah Absolutely. I'm excited yeah that's always it's always an exciting time of year and I just realized I scratched my nose just as we went live and now we've got me <laughs> scratching my nose as a thumbnail for this uh, this week's um this week's podcast is gonna be me scratching my nose perfect excellent um good evening ladies and gentlemen in the chat let's just see Sam's in already how are you doing uh Sam always uh uh, always prompt and ready to go. Chris is in. Yo, yo, yo. How's it going? Uh, Chris, um, who else have we got coming through? It has taken a second to go live. So I imagine people are only just getting the notification. So we'll hang around and chat to people as they start to come in. But um, yeah, let's uh, have a look at what's been going on this week. I don't think we've got too much news to, to cover from uh, that side of things. Um, there's a few stories about Amazon in the news this week. Nothing really uh, that poignant worth going through, really. Um, they're just pushing forward with some of their collaborations in the UK with Morrisons. Um, they've actually got a, a grocery uh, program going on with Morrisons and have been doing so for a, for a while in the UK. And apparently um, they're sort of pushing uh, the European grocery store presence uh, uh, with their alliance with uh, Morrison's I think it's mainly for the the cities the main cities they're doing that you basically you can shop at Morrison's and and Amazon will fulfill your grocery order that's what just making use of their uh logistics service I think um one of those things um Amazon shut down its spark service did anyone use spark I certainly didn't I don't I think that was a bit of a a flop to be honest with you did you ever uh, see anything about spark Kev no not me no. Uh, yeah, I don't they, know what it's I, about. I don't know what it's about. Well, it's probably why they shut it down because I don't think anyone else <laughs> did either. To be honest with you, it's it was a social network type combination where people can post up their photos of of what they've bought on Amazon. It was I don't think anyone's that interested in it, and you can do that as part of the reviews on Amazon anyway. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're always looking to to push new ideas and experiment, which is I suppose a good thing. And and if you invest that much time and effort into pushing new boundaries and trying new things, you're bound to get things wrong. So I'm sure they're always setting things up and shutting things down on a regular yeah. basis don't you it's part of business right <laughs> i mean yeah. uh, you've got to you've got to always test you've got to always experiment in your business you've got to keep trying things that's yeah. that's the one of the fundamentals of success i think you know if it doesn't work then it, it doesn't matter shut it down and 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 go again do something yeah. else yeah. um that's that's just the way you're going to be successful long term in life if, because the, the reality is we're always going to have failures. Like it doesn't, if you're in business, you're always going to be failing. That's mm -hmm. just the, the reality. Like we've in the warehouse, I can't tell you how many times we've moved around this warehouse and we've, we've tried to figure this is quicker over here and this is better over there. But 
you've got to always adjust. And um, yeah, That's and it. we've just had a significant move around this past sort of week. And it's it's now actually, we feel like we're ready for Q3, especially with the um, the prep service as well. Is it, It's so busy now, it's, uh, it's amazing. Awesome. That's good to see. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to keep reevaluating and taking a step back sometimes and say, I'm definitely guilty of doing things in a certain way just because that's what the way I've always done it. And, you know, three or four years on, it might not serve you as well as it did three or four years ago. So as you move along and and your sort of uh, business grows, I think it's definitely a good idea to reevaluate what you're doing, how you're doing it. And maybe there are better ways of doing things now, better solutions, providers, better services and just in, in terms of where you put your tables in, in your warehouse it's absolutely a good idea yeah. just to have a think about how how everything is placed and and how you do your work so uh, yeah it's good uh, good tip especially for in general. Es- yeah especially especially the fundamentals like it's, do you know those things that do you know when you first get started you get started on your business journey and like you know the the basic fundamentals and you and if you're anything like me and i, I know we all we all work in criterias and does a product do this and does it do that? But it's actually quite good just to question just the fundamentals at times and just mm-hmm. and just do some little experiments. I'm not saying go, you know, don't go maverick and just put ten thousand pounds in just doing anything. You know, yeah. I'm not saying that. But you can do little little tests, little split tests here and there. Mm-hmm. You know, test this for tr- try we're always doing that. We're always we'll always like, okay, we're gonna test this theory. And then we're going to put hundred pound into it and see yeah. what happens. Is does it is that a positive thing? Is it a negative thing? Mm-hmm. If it's positive, we keep doing it. And that's I think that is again just something really a fundamental thing in business. Always change things. Absolutely. You always keep an eye on what's going on. I, I'll come back to that uh, thought in a moment, Kev, because I've got something to contribute. But we've had a moment now. So 10 people have joined us while we've been talking about that. So I just want to say good evening to uh, uh, Matt. <clears throat> yeah. Webley is in the house <laughs> and Elsie is in the house. All right. You're not having far too much fun in the chat by the looks of it. Evening all. Kev is in as well. Both Simons, I think, are on the ball this evening. Yep, they are. We've, we're fully Simoned up, which is good. Uh, Sam's already on the case. We'll hit that like button, please. Thank you very <laughs> much, Sam. Doing your job. I'll pay you later. Sean is watching while in Sainsbury's, continuing his theme of watching in bizarre locations. I the love that, week, Sean. I <laughs> love that. Great. The other week he was on the side of the uh, motorway, literally, because he did a live from being on the side of the road, pulled over in a lay-by watching the reseller show. Now he's in Sainsbury's. <laughs> he literally will catch us. What, wherever he is doing, he's going to be uh, watching the reseller show which is golden i love it you'll have to do yeah. a live from sainsbury sean that would be pretty cool that'd be a good one <laughs> yeah well the thing is the the amazing thing is is um the the community is getting it, it, it's it is growing which is fantastic and it's great to have so many of us just sort of hang out on a monday evening even if uh, like matt says playing cod at the same time absolutely love call of duty i haven't played it since like 2015 yeah, um, can we just uh, clarify? He's not playing with a cod. He's actually playing Call of Duty. Can we just clarify? Okay, okay so weird? yeah, if, if, you, if you're not in the if you're not in the slang, if you're not in the in the yeah. pod, um, <laughs> back in the day, I used I used to play COD, Call of Duty, um, Modern Warfare Two. Oh God, yeah. I was I was one of those gamers, and I had my headsets on. I was I was all in. I was absolutely. Like, I was one of those kids. I was one of those. Yeah, I was one of those kids that were like super angry as well like, like Camp- <laughs> camper camper and I'd, I'd just be like oh i i, I, I was one of those kids that would just get really angry but um yeah i love it i love it <laughs> some of those original <laughs> call of duty games were pretty good i must admit i haven't i haven't uh, uh, played uh computer games for a long time now unfortunately but uh but uh yeah some of those early uh cod games were, were pretty uh pretty awesome yeah. but, uh, yes he, but just just to confirm we're not talking about playing with fish yeah. yeah he's not he's not got a massive atlantic cod on the go <laughs> he's, he's playing a computer game that's uh that's just put some weird uh, uh images in my in my head now with uh, matt waverley with a cod but yes that's right he's playing a computer game but uh yeah enjoy uh matt mm. with your uh with your gameplay and i'm glad you've got us on the on the 
on the audio while you're doing that. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. enjoy that. And good evening to everyone else who's joined us. Now, I just want to go back whilst uh, now we said hello to everyone in the chat. I just want to go back to your point because actually I'll see if I can get that out while I'm talking and doing two things at once, which is dangerous for me because I end up making no sense at all if I ever do. Uh, where are we? Uh, yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> we were talking about testing different ideas, testing different things and re-examining your business. And that reminded me of a post which I probably can't find now uh, because I want to look at it quickly. But um, actually it was in Matt's group. Uh, somebody I think it was Matt's group. Um, somebody mentioned they've had some hassle with one of their eBay listings. Actually, um, it was a very well established eBay listing, and it was uh, actually some something like providing thirty percent of their business was coming from this one uh, listing. And out of nowhere, eBay decided to uh, shut it down, saying that it was in the wrong category. They got back to them and, and queried it, and uh, actually, they said, "No, you're right. It is in the right. It is in the right category. Let them relist it." But they would not re. Uh, they wouldn't let them put the, the the original listing with all the sales history and all of that connection back again, which means they lost loads and loads of ground with a very well established um, history on one listing. So. Basically, those sales just went away overnight and they realized how much they were relying on that one listing, which is uh, really interesting. A good wake up call, actually, because one of the pitfalls to having a decent established business that are doing it doing very well, especially if one particular part of it is doing particularly well. Yeah, the better it is, the more you have to lose when uh, when you have something go down. So, yeah, all the more reason to test new things and certainly don't lose too much focus on what you are doing because you need to keep moving forward. But at the same time, I definitely think it's a good idea if you're an eBay seller to be messing with Amazon. If you're an Amazon seller, throw up some eBay listings. If you don't know anything about eBay, maybe set aside some time just to play with it and see if you can make it work because even if you can make 30 percent of your income come from something somewhere else like ebay it's not as much of a massive drop if something happens it could be just a simple thing it could be a terrible thing like you lose the entire account i think you know the likelihood of a catastrophic catastrophic uh, um, thing happening these days is probably less thankfully but you know you still hear horror stories so yeah having having a few ideas and having your income over a few different areas is always a good idea we've mentioned it before mm. kevin i think Absolutely. that post was a good a good one to uh, uh to sort of uh, make us look oh here we go yes it was alan uh, thompson that was talking about that uh a few hours ago on the, i think on matt's group but uh i would actually uh, expand a little bit there andy i would actually go I, I would i would actually go as far to say that um consider starting the diversification process in different businesses altogether hmm. because Definitely. like i i totally agree yes it's great to diversify from like an amazon to an ebay for example but it's actually quite good to consider Add in different types of businesses altogether, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the internet, like the, the internet, the uh, the information age that we live in. There's so many different business models. It makes sense to look at the look at the setup that you've got. I mean, I'll give you a prime example. Um, looking at the the resources that you have available, the skills that you've developed, you can just leverage that, and it might give you an opportunity elsewhere. So, when I first moved into this warehouse. It, was, it wasn't It was even in my mindset. I didn't even know prep services existed. It was just my business was just growing to a point where I needed a warehouse. But mm -hmm. then it actually made sense to leverage the same resources that we've got, the systems that we have as a prep service as well. Yeah. It was just, a, it was just, it just made sense. Um, it just, and, but then it's completely a different business. Do you see what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And then from that, obviously um, myself and, and you, Andy, when you, you're into, you've built your brand wholesale help and you're, you've done courses and you've done information products, you've done live events. You know, the, these are valuable skills mm -hmm. that you've learned that are not 100% reliant on Amazon or yeah. eBay, for example, exactly. which means that over time, over time, the skill set that you've learned in building your brand or, or doing live events or being a consultant or helping people or whatever it is, these are valuable skills that you're gonna that you're gonna learn. So um, I absolutely hundred percent agree that you should diversify as much as you can. Like on Amazon itself, if you can get like multiple sellers accounts, 
in in a in the legal way of doing it. Absolutely mm -hmm. do that. We have done that. Try looking at uh, the diversification of, um, for example, you can get on from FBA. Try some FBM. Try some self fulfilled prime as well if you wanted mm -hmm. to get yourself in that. Um, eBay. We personally haven't looked at eBay up at this this point, but we've definitely added uh, the fulfillment by merchant this year and mm -hmm. the self fulfilled prime this year, which has been a fantastic an additional stream um, yeah. of sales, which is it's great. But I think that's the the key here is like mm -hmm. you 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 want you don't want to you don't want to get comfortable. I think that's yeah. the I think that's the truth for like you've got mm -hmm. to diversify, and and you've got to be aware as well. Like you've got to be aware that if you are reliant on the one product, say, let's say you've got that one product and it's like 30% of your business in this case, like they may not have been aware until they lost that product. And then it's like, oh crap. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, yeah. it's really quite important to, to become yeah. clear on where your income is and see if you can diversify into smaller branches. Cause mm -hmm. I would much rather have, you know, a hundred smaller streams <laughs> than like one big river. Yeah. Exactly, I mean, this is exactly what Alan says at the end of his post. He said, this message, uh, the message to you guys is to make sure you have other streams of income in case the inevitable happens. My mistake was I got too comfortable. Don't make the same mistake. I think that sums it up perfectly. Um, he had 40% uh, of their revenue uh, and over 30,000 sales from this one listing. And it shows you how much uh, ever catastrophe that can be. And apparently the sales are slowly coming back now. They're building it up and, and the repeat buyers are finding them again. But it shows you what a massive difference that can make. So, yes, I think you've hit it on the head there. He said um, uh, he got too comfortable. And I think that's the, the, you know, the, uh, the message here. Don't get too comfortable. If you're onto a good thing, if it's working, then always keep an eye on what other streams of income, as you say, other businesses, I'll go for, even, uh, you know, lots of other opportunities. I'll, um, I'll share another uh, quick philosophy. I know we're all Jim Rohn fans here in, in the chat, yeah. but Jim Rohn, I think Jim Rohn said something like, um, you've got to be preparing for winter all summer. I think he said something like that. You know, yeah. in the in the summertime, prepare for winter. You know, and that's the truth. Like, if you're if if things are going well, and we're going to go into we've we've we over the last six months, we've gone through in in Amazon terms, in selling physical products terms, we've gone through the winter time. Mm -hmm. You know, and we are coming towards spring now. You know, there, it is like you know, it's starting to get not just warmer outside in the summer, but it's it's actually starting to. Um, we're getting towards the, the Q3 and then Q4. And things are going to start going a little bit like this over the yep. next sort of six months compared to this past six months. So, you know, Jim Rohn used to say, like, if, it's, if, if you're going in a good time, like Q4, right? Q4, when things are amazing for you and you are reaping all the rewards that you absolutely should do, for those guys that, are, um, that do reap all the rewards, like, Always have a mind on Q1. Always have a mind like, okay, what are we, what are we preparing for? What are we preparing for? Yeah, and um, for sure. yeah, and that's that's it's gonna it, having that philosophy. I think it helps. Definitely, definitely, especially you know, obviously, we all know that toys go crazy in Q4, and it's definitely the the thing to be into in Q4. The more you can get in, the better. But yeah, come Q1, then there's going to be a huge drop off. So if there's a more stable business in Q1, um, used books or you know, grocery or one of many other uh, different lines you can sell on Amazon, maybe look at a different category to have in your books, just so you don't get quite a massive uh, drop in Q1 if you are sold based in toys so uh yeah something to something to think about really good advice and jim rome was talking about that back i don't know in the 70s and 80s mm. and and really inspired thinking those the, the wisdom that he uh offers is still 100 relevant today which is uh fantastic um <clears throat> uh, uh matt actually says that uh, uh kev's not just a pretty face he totally agrees with uh, what he just said there uh Nobody I, I, but I, I think it's the, room. but I think it's the, you know, and I, I, we don't mean to to back the the same sort of drum here, but it's I think it's the right like if we we're talking about building a business where we're not we're not doing this part time. This is I think that's the thing that I need to say that if you're if you're doing this if you're not bothered about doing it as a business and you're just doing it part time, then you've not got no 
no skin in the game, if you like. You've not got nothing to really lose. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, you've still got something to lose, but I think it's the only responsible thing to do as a business owner if you've got a business where you've got fixed expenses, you've got employees, you've got warehouse, you've got operations, mm -hmm. it, it, you'd be, you know, you you are, it's your responsibility to think that way, you know, and it's not about being the Debbie Downer, it's not about like when, when think, you know, things are great in this warehouse, I absolutely love being in the warehouse, the girls are on fire and everything, but I'm always thinking like, how can we get better? How can we do this? What do we need to do here? How can we better serve our prep service customers or whatever the case is, just simply because You've got to you've got to treat it seriously. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yep. Very wise words. Um, what, what we're saying in the so Simon said. Uh, Simon, Simon said here. Uh, Q one this year frightened the hell out of me. Thought Amazon had closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're taking January off. We've gone on holiday. <laughs> yeah, it can feel like that sometimes. That you can go from absolutely having massive volume, and then suddenly you wonder where everyone's gone. Yeah, it can be like that. If it's your first Q4, and it might be then your your first Q1 after Q4, then yeah, that's better to be pre warned about that. It can drop off fairly sharply. Mm. The beginning, of the first week of January, uh, you may well think that everybody's gone home because uh, yeah, there's not a lot yeah. going on. Quite and, and just to uh, just to talk on that Q1 cliff, I um, I quit my job in around about the 5th of December 2015. And obviously that was Q4 and I was like, this is great. Don't don't get any better than this is just like, it's just only one way up. I was like, mm. oh my God, like next month. Because I didn't even think about Q1. Like I never mm. experienced it before because I, I started at, in June. So it was like coming up to Q3, then Q4. So I'd never experienced Q1. So... Mm -hmm. My goodness me, that was a shock. I was like, right, quit, quit my job. I was full time. I was hundred percent reliant, and and literally, I was like, what has happened here? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me, can I have my job back? <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Nah. Very uh, good idea to plan for those uh, those points for sure. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Right, let's go to some more questions then, shall we? Yeah, uh, what do we got going? lots of questions in this week and uh, really appreciate you guys sending in questions throughout the week in the, f the Facebook group and um, our um, show notes planner Des is doing a fantastic job picking all yes. your um, all your questions up. So just a quick shout out to Des who's in the background helping me and Andy put, put these shows together. So um, much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, as as requested, Sean is actually now live streaming from Sainsbury's. <laughs> Good old boy, Sean. Well done. Thank you for the uh, thank you for doing that. Yeah, he, Wait, his car is absolutely full up. As, uh, here's, as well. here's a challenge for Sean. Why not go go to the reception and try getting us on the tannoy? How amazing <laughs> yeah. would that be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be. Uh, uh, that would be a challenge. Oh dear. We'll see what we can uh, we can ask Sean to do each week. That'd be quite funny. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, um, let's uh, continue with uh, what we were doing. But uh, yes, um, Des has been excellent for collecting all these questions for us and uh, been able to present it in front of us. Bit of a strange one from uh, Danny Bannister <clears throat> uh, was actually saying. Is there any, anything wrong with the way I poly bagged something? It took a, uh, it got a problem reported from a, a incoming uh, package, and <clears throat> apparently Amazon didn't like something. But I know it said poly bagging required. Excuse me. <clears throat> it said poly bagging required, and they took it and they presented him with a picture of two perfectly poly, poly bagged items. <laughs> and so um, he said, is there something wrong with the way I've bagged these or Amazon just being morons? Uh, I think that's probably Amazon just being morons, to be honest with you, because uh, I, I can't see the comments on that, but there were some comments, and I think he followed up to say that they just said it's fine. So <laughs> you've always yeah, got to query. That's just odd, isn't it? That's yeah, just they... like, I don't know. I mean... It is quite frightening, really, isn't it? I mean, it, it's it, it's borderline comical. It, it's it's comical to the point where you it wants you it makes you want to cry, really, because exactly. you think because yeah. you think to yourself, oh my god, like the this company has allowed me to sell multiple millions 
yet yeah. they send an image like this. <laughs> yeah. Where, where it's, it's flashed up, obviously it's flashed up on the processor screen that this item needs to be polybagged. He's like, oh, needs to be polybagged. Does this person who's who's following this up know what a polybag is? Because I don't think they do, because they've just taken a picture to say, see, no, you need to do the polybagging, but uh, they don't realize it's plain. Even the grainy image that I'm looking, uh, that's been copied and pasted from a grainy image on Facebook, I can clearly see this too. But yes, if you go like three grainy image live streamed on the internet, you can still see there's a polybag there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> two poly bags sat next to each other but uh, danny follows up in the comments and said i mean it's a human being taking the photo surely they'd have to uh, have a thought hold on this is polybag. I know this is the only thing, Danny, I can imagine is the person didn't actually understand what a polybag is and they're just doing what they're told. Maybe the system flags it up and said there's a problem and their their duty at that point is to take a picture and, and upload it onto the system. That's all I can imagine. But, uh, but yeah. But I, th I, I think, I think the, C yeah, I think the, C you know, the message or the outcome to this is similar to what we've mentioned in the previous couple of shows. Just, just make sure you, you, you keep evidence of everything that mm. you do. Yeah. You know, we, we've had, we've had, I think we've pretty much, I don't want to say we've seen everything because Amazon can surprise you at any moment, but yeah. you know, we've had everything from, you know, we've had, we've had like, uh, boxes, our shipments that are just sort of brand new boxes. They leave here and they turn up at Amazon all like crushed and stuff. So it's clearly mm. like something happened in UPS in the Someone's transit. Football with it. Yeah. Can yeah. It. And, and, and they're saying to us like, do not send your shipments like this. And it's like, <laughs> come on. Yeah. And, and the, the box is like literally ripped open, like mm. the products are sp like spilling out of it. And I'm mm. thinking to myself, like, come on, somebody on the other end surely has used a bit of common sense to think it's not actually left our premises like that. <laughs> With the could, stuff could you out of it. Yeah, yeah, could you imagine the stuff just falling out and you've got you've actually got like a spade or something and you're just like <laughs> sho shoveling all your products onto it. Onto yep, that will do. <laughs> Off it goes. Here you go, Reg. Take my box away. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you next uh, yeah. next week. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But um, yeah, this is what we find, unfortunately. But yes, in this situation, just query it. And it's obvious that it's it's incorrect. And uh, uh, yeah, they'll they'll sort it out. I think that this one has been sorted. Uh, Simon also is in the in the chat said that um, uh, he just had this uh, again. Uh, they supplied a photo of the items that are in a poly bag. Someone had this a while back. Uh, and they just escalated it and, and peeled it, and then they just say, "Oops, yeah, my yes. error, sorry," and get rid of it. So you know, it's it's just one of those things, unfortunately. If you query it and just say to them, "No, I'm happy with it. It's polybagged," then usually it gets escalated to someone with hopefully a bit of common sense, and they can say, "Yep, I agree, it's polybagged," and then it goes away. But um, a minor distraction, I think, is all we can uh, say about that. But um, unless you've got anything further to add on that one, Kev, I've got another question that we don't actually have uh, from Des because it was only uh, today that it was asked. Uh, no, no, on? that's, um, yeah, we'll move on. Okay, cool. So Maureen, who is often a, a chat regular, uh, has got a question here, which I haven't heard this one before, so I thought it's worth uh, mentioning. Um, does uh, the quantity of products sent into FBA have a direct impact on the sales velocity? E.g., if I send in three of one product versus 20 of a product, does it make a difference? Two, for restocking, uh, is the suggested quantity guide in seller support a good gauge to use as it's basically telling me to, uh, the stock level needed to increase sales. In summary, how should I use the data? Good question. I haven't heard that in a, uh, I haven't heard that one actually. So that's a good one to, to talk about. Um, yeah. What they're telling you. Fantastic that the stock, question. Yeah. The, the, the suggestion I, I found is usually quite not far off. Actually, it's, it's a pretty good guide to go on. They're not telling you to increase sales. They're simply telling you, uh, showing you what you might need based on the selling volume at that current time, how many you should send in to keep it in stock. But obviously you've got to use your own nows, but that's simply a stocking reference. But 
in terms of um, whether uh, you have a better chance of selling more if you've got more in stock, Amazon doesn't actually tell us uh, what it chooses. Uh, but I think it's a fairly known fact that the more items, if you if you have three and someone else has 20 and the feedback is the same, I think there is more chance that you'll get the buy box over uh, if you've got 20 in stock versus three. So I think it certainly helps if you've got a load. So if you happen to have 20 and it's not going to cost you a fortune to keep it in stock, as in the sales velocity is enough, then and you've got competition there, I don't think it's a bad idea to send it in. I don't, don't know if you've got anything to add to that, Kev. No, I think um, I think it's a, it's a fantastic question, by the way. I think mm. we, we've definitely, I don't think I've ever answered the question before, but no. here's my thoughts on it. I mean, um, Amazon... Amazon, the, the way the buy box works is there's so many different components to uh, the the algorithm of uh, of Amazon and, and how they select who has the buy box. But we, we know some really common and easy ones, such as like the price is obviously the, the most important factor. Whatever Amazon deem it to be the best for the customer, they will put that person in the buy box, which is usually the lowest price. Mm -hmm. um, also, when it, they obviously factor in um, the the seller themselves, like the feedback that they've had. The the question is about the quantities. Obviously, that is in factor. I believe the location of the product as well, or the the customer, the the customer who's logging on because Amazon know everything and they know where uh, people are based and they just a part of the way they work. I'm convinced they look at where the product is in terms of fulfillment centers and things, that could definitely have some type of factor. I actually think that the more Amazon start working with this performance index number, which has come out this year, I actually think that's gonna play in a bit, bit of a factor as well. But I think to answer the question, that was just general, what we think that Amazon use in terms of the buy box. But I think in general, I, I do think that um, quantities do help for sure. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. I wouldn't. I wouldn't rely on it. But if you've got, if you have um, enough, and it, it, you know, I wouldn't recommend sending a year's worth in all at once if you've got somewhere to keep it because it's just an unnecessary uh, payment of um, of storage. But if it's selling reasonably well, you know, selling s sending in if you've got. If you're going to send in three months and you've got four months, you may as well send all four months in at once and get that extra benefit from the, having it more than your competition. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. But in terms of how many um, how many Amazon's suggesting, I don't think that's a bad guide because they know how often uh, the sales velocity and it's an easy way to look and say, yeah, okay, that seems about right. I've done the calculation myself and then happened to glance at what they're suggesting and quite often it's quite close. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say it's a bad, bad idea to go on there, but they're not suggesting that you'll get more sales as a result of sending that in. They're just suggesting that that will keep it in stock. And that's the, that's the main thing. But uh, yeah, good question. That Thanks for your question, Maureen. I'm not sure yeah, I've seen you in the much. chat tonight, but, uh, but thank you. It's always. Uh, always yeah, I think I, yep. Saw uh, Maureen in the chat earlier. Oh, Evening all. Well yeah. Oh, well done. Oh yes. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Well done. I love that. I love I love good quality questions. It, it mm. is definitely something um, I think we all need to, to try focusing on. Um, the questions that you ask are so, so important. I mean, mm. I know for me, I try to, I try to think about this all the time, especially if I, especially if I have a, a moment when I'm talking to somebody and I'm, I'm like, I don't know, let's say for example, um, uh, we, we, we mentioned Mark last week from Passive Tax, yeah. you know, it, He's, he's going to answer your questions and hopefully we're going to get him on, on the show as, as a sort of a special tax related show. Um, but it's the questions that you ask determines the, obviously the answer that you get. So mm. what Maureen just did there was a really high quality question because that could actually impact the way she now thinks about her business. So mm. I'm always thinking like if I'm, if I spend any amount of time with you, Andy, I'm always thinking like, okay, what what question can I can I and just take some time to think about some questions mm -hmm. that you can really ask somebody to get a valuable answer. And for me, I I have a uh, on a Tuesday morning, um, a part of my mastermind group. We we get together on a call on a Skype call at ten o'clock every Tuesday morning, and we mm -hmm. always have we always we always share two things. Um, one thing that we're doing good at at the minute, 
and one thing that we're we're not doing so good at at the minute. And yeah. then we obviously get the ability to then ask questions from your peers, and ultimately they can only answer based on the question that you ask. So if you really think about the questions that you ask of people, especially Facebook groups and things like, because we're all in communities, like think about the questions that you ask and um, yeah, could make a real big difference. I know for me in the last four years, I would not be with where I am today if it wasn't for the the mastermind group, being able to help, you know, help each other and support each other along the way. We're living in a great time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are a lot of there are a lot of sort of questions that might come up uh, time and time again, especially doing this on a weekly basis. Uh, you know, we, we, we're not going to want to go over the same ones over and over again because you can watch back the previous episodes and maybe see that you can even do uh, searches on YouTube because there's loads of great uh, videos that's freely available on some of the more basic uh, ideas and principles and things like that. And I very much uh, am a fan of people who will go out and find the information they need to find it for the, the basics. But if there's intelligent, good quality questions, as you say, Kev, then that makes all the difference because, as you say, you, you can only get out what you what you put in. So you have to ask the right questions to get the, the right answers for uh, yeah. for sure. And, and yeah, it, it helps everyone if uh, if we can get some some interesting yeah. things to, to talk it's, about. It's like, um, you know, if you was ever fortunate enough to have a one question for Jeff Bezos himself, you know, the, the question that you probably shouldn't ask is something like, what is Amazon FBA? Because yeah, you can find exactly. that yourself, you know, yeah, you can find exactly. that. Like, there's a lot yeah. of answers out there that you can just sort of do some self-education and, and work out the answers. But yeah. there are some things operationally, and this is why, I, that's why I, I like the question that Maureen asked, because it was it was based on, like, operations. It was based on strategy. It was based on something she can actually implement right now, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, which could exactly. make a big, if you think about it, that could make a huge difference. Now she knows, okay, think about my quantities. This is something that I could actually rely on and, and now do some tests. The yeah. Are the suggestions right that Amazon are giving me? And you mm -hmm. think if that plays out over the next six months, that could be the difference between, that could be hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of sales, really, if you yeah. think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often, Just by the quality often. of the question. Yeah, just that little thing that that puts all the pieces together. So uh, it's often the case you're just missing that golden nugget of information that makes all the makes all the difference in your own business. So yeah, asking the right questions, it's a it's a big deal. So well done. Now, I think it must be about that time of the show. We're just over halfway through, and there are eleven people watching, and only five people have put their thumbs up so far. So. Um, I think we should uh, we should request that if everyone's watching and so far got any amount of uh, use out of the uh, out of the show so far, give us a thumbs up. It's always useful, and I enjoy uh, billing people into doing it as well. It's quite good fun. <laughs> yeah, we just and even you guys that are listening back on on the podcast episode, if you wouldn't mind, just give us a review on iTunes and things. It does help us out, of course. It you know it allows us to reach more and more people and uh, just build the community more and more. And it's obviously, it's great all around. But um, as always, I'm just very, I'm just, I'm just very, I'm very grateful to be spending time with um, like-minded individuals. Cause I mean, if it wasn't for like me, I mean, I would just sit here and talk to you, Andy. I'm, I'm yeah, living exactly. life, but it's just, <laughs> you know, yeah. But, yeah. but it is actually quite cool that we have like a little bit of a virtual mastermind. It's fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. That's how it feels as you get, you know, regulars tuning in every week and we can have a bit of fun and a bit of banter and also, you know, help people out along the same uh, at the same time. So it's awesome. I'm, I'm enjoying it and uh, hopefully it grows as we uh, as we continue. So uh, thank you. Yeah. We've got a few few more likes after saying that. So appreciate you guys for. Uh, and just a quick shout out for um, you, uh, you fathers. Hopefully you had a. Um... Hopefully you had a great weekend. Whatever you was doing with the with the family, I hope you had a great time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I had a, I had a lovely weekend. I uh, spent the weekend with my father as well, and we uh, took him to over to Snape Maltins, which is a concert hall on on the east coast, and took him to a classical music uh, concert, which is uh, his favourite type of music. Uh, I must admit, some of the pieces went to my taste personally, but <laughs> we had a lovely evening. Uh, we, we got got some. Uh, 
got some dinner and uh, had a lovely evening and then actually spent the uh, the Sunday with him uh, so half of Sunday as well so yeah had a had a nice uh, weekend with my father and for all of you guys I hope you got spoiled as well and uh, maybe some breakfasts in bed and uh, some uh, fun fun with your family so it's a good time isn't it <laughs> yeah love it I love it like it's like a it's like a second birthday to us now yeah excellent fantastic What's uh, Kev's, uh, Matt says, I wish I could speak to Andy and Kev every week. <laughs> well, you are virtually <laughs> speaking to us every week, Matt. It's uh, always appreciated. But, I mean, you've got your hands full with the cod, so, you know, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> Talking of cod, I, I had some cod last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so, uh, Sean, um, okay, Sean's got a question. Let me see what Sean's been asking about. Uh, just checked email on my phone saying customers being refunded merchant item costing £87.66. Reasoning saying order not received yet. Used Royal Mail tracked. Um, okay, so, so that's a merchant order. Um, customer has been refunded. That's weird because if it's a merchant order, I would imagine that you'd have to uh okay that if it's a request for a refund uh sean uh, it would be weird that it's just gone straight through to, to a refund if it's merchant um yeah i'd query that I, i'd just speak to seller support because that seems weird that it would go straight through if it's a no. merchant order if they're requesting a refund then i would say just hold on <clears throat> while i check the check the the royal mail tracking and uh ultimately if royal mail have messed up then maybe you can put it right but uh yeah, I would just uh, just open a dialogue with that one and see what's going on. If they're requesting a refund, that's fair enough. You can say sorry about the delay. Uh, yeah, I'll see what's happened to it. And if it's just an, another day away, then it's hardly worth it. Yeah, I'd be interested. Um, I'd be interested for you guys that are maybe a little bit more heavily into fulfillment by merchant on some of the things that you guys do, like like. Sean, in his case, if, if, for example, that's one thing I love about Amazon, uh, the FBA, um, if the customer gets like a damaged item or something, you know, it's not your concern, but obviously when it is FBM, then it is your concern and it's something yeah. that you're going to have to deal with in your own sort of business. And, but, um, I wonder if anybody's actually, um, let's say if it's a, a Royal Mail issue, uh, I, I assume you can sort of go to Royal Mail and, and sort of chase it up with them, right? You can. Yeah. I mean, it, you said, let's have a look. It was Royal Mail tracked. So you should be able to check the progress, check the tracking number. If they've lost it, then you have some recompense uh, to them to actually uh, get the money back from them. Uh, but Sean said, we have initiated a refund in the amount of £87.66. It's very strange. Um, I don't do a lot of merchant stuff, but from the top, off the top of my head, usually someone has to put in a request and you have to approve the request, but it says we have initiated a refund. The only, w the only way that has happened in my experience is if, it's, if you've had a, a, a case ongoing and Amazon have stepped in and done something weird. I would speak to seller support about that, Sean. That seems very unconventional unless someone else in the chat has got some uh, advice that uh, uh, they do a bit more merchant stuff but that seems very weird that it's gone straight to a refund a refund reason order not received i posted it got a receipt with a postcode tracking says ah tracking says delivered mm, sounds fishy ah hmm <laughs> i'm not sure about that sean definitely get <laughs> sell up before because that seems very sounds very fishy and i'm not talking about matt's card either <laughs> uh, I think you are getting con, Sean. I'd check that. It does sound look it does sound like a bit of a weird one. Um yeah, contact seller support and find out what's going on because if you, you tell them that you've had a delivery receipt, then they shouldn't be refunding anyone. They shouldn't be refunding so quickly either. Just make sure it's a real I mean, yeah, if you recognize the order, just make sure it's not a phishing email, Sean. I mean, you obviously recognize the order, so it's probably a genuine thing. But just first thing to do is make sure it's a genuine thing. Because there's a lot of phishing emails you can get, which are designed to get Amazon sellers to go, <gasps> like, we've just suspended your account, click this link and enter your Amazon details to, to, to get it unsuspended. And people can be in such a, a flummox to say, oh, no, they can't suspend my account. They don't, they don't switch on their logical part of their brain. And you can get conned quite easily by those sort of things. But it sounds like a genuine uh, 
uh, listing because it's a very specific amount. You obviously recognize it, Sean, but um, but yeah, I would contact seller support and explain that it's delivered and you've got the got the signature and everything because that does sound weird. You need to get to the bottom of that because it sounds like someone has uh, has got it and asked for the refund or so, or it's been delivered to a neighbor and they haven't realized that can happen if it gets delivered to a neighbor because someone's out and they haven't realized and they said i didn't have it because the neighbor hasn't brought it round or some that sort of stuff so contact royal mail yeah. contact seller support get to the bottom of it hopefully it will come out in your favor sean fingers crossed for you and, mate. yeah and, all, and also i guess just to add a bit of um value to the the wider audience there as well in terms of the security that you mentioned um Always be careful on the emails that you receive from from anybody relating to Amazon. You can get some really, really weird looking emails being sent to you. Even you can get like text messages, I think. Um, you know, you've got to be really careful on what you press, what you click on. Just think about what they're saying. You know, if they're saying that you, I don't know, pre press, if you get a message from Amazon saying, press this link now and you will prevent your account being suspended obviously just right. think about you know think about what you're doing um and obviously uh, in, install the uh, the two-step authentication or whatever you call it the hmm. um because the, they they introduced that maybe can you remember when they introduced that i think it was like last year or 18 months or so ago hmm. because they had a scenario where people were actually um getting their accounts hacked through this type of method, like enter yeah. your details, click this link. And people were actually going into their seller central accounts. I think they were just tanking prices, like putting in really, really low prices like pence and then buying stock, like because it's so cheap. Um, yeah. So you gotta be, you gotta be careful and, and make sure that your, your account is secure. Yeah, a good way to be sure if you get an email and it's a, a big email like your account's been shut down, there's a major problem. Don't click the link in the email, go separately, open a new browser, log into your Seller Central from there. Because if it's a big thing, it will have the red flag of death up on the left, top left hand corner and you can see it there. So that's one way to know for sure. If you independently open up your browser, go and log in separately. If it's not there, then you've got to be thinking, hold on a minute. It's just said I'm suspended, but I've logged straight into Amazon. I've got no notification. Then you know it's it's a scam. So that's the best thing to do. Always be slightly wary of clicking links in emails because you never know. It's, they can disguise the links quite well these days. So, yeah, do it independently. Then if there is a red flag, you can deal with it and see what the issue is. But uh, always be careful. Good advice. Good advice. Red flag of death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the scary red flag of death. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then Amazon start tricking us by using the red flag of death to to start promoting their sponsored ads. Exactly. That's not. Yeah. On. That's yeah. not. On. That's when the uh, it's like when the um, the double glazing people start sending you uh, uh, flyers with brown envelopes, and you start getting a, seeing a brown envelope, and you think it's from HMRC, and you're thinking, "Oh mm. God, what do they want?" And they just want to try and send you some windows. You think that's not fair. That's not yeah. fair. You can't start hiding in brown envelopes now. That's going uh, <laughs> that's going into different territory now. But anyway, I digress. Um, mm. So we're still okay. That's weird. So, oh, it's a while ago. So that makes more sense, Sean. She bought it on the 30th of May, says refunded. So, okay, so it's so it's happened a while ago. So that would make more sense that it's refunded because it's been a while. But usually you should have seen some, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've missed, so, uh, if it's been requested that she's had a request for the refund and you've missed it, Sean. That could happen. If you miss the notification that someone's requesting a refund and you ignore it, then that eventually gets escalated to Amazon and they'll do it for you uh, in the event that you don't hold any resistance. Um, that's the only way I can do it. But yeah, your best bet is seller support, I'm afraid, uh, because it's, um, yeah, it's already happened. So speak to them about it and see what the situation is. If you've missed the notification, then that's probably a bit of bad luck because once they've done it, then you know that's it. They've made their decision and and they'll probably stick to it. But yeah, uh, I hope you get it. Uh, there was a there was a a message earlier on from Simon saying anyone had any experience of on buy? What's on buy? Not heard of that one. That's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> never heard, no, never, never heard of heart. on buy before. Yeah. No, sorry, I don't know that one. 
sounds intriguing. Maybe that's another n- another new platform. New platforms are all very well, but they need to get a bit of traction, or else you know, um, it's not worth the the effort sometimes. But you know, there's always new ones coming up, and they can be quite good. But I, I like to see a bit of traction first. Oh yeah, it looks. Mm. <laughs> they uh, come up on um, Google saying own marketplace and Amazon alternative. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's good. Apparently it's a UK based platform that PayPal are promoting. So maybe PayPal are uh, involved in there somewhere along the lines, but okay. If it's got some reasonably large backers, then maybe they might get some traction. And uh, in which case that's always good news. I think the more, the more, options we have and the more uk marketplaces we have i don't think we have as many as as our friends in north america uh, so uh, yeah the more the merrier no. that's what i say keeps amazon honest if there's uh, less of a monopoly and more people to try and uh, take their crown it it's always good for us i think personally oh 100 percent. i mean yeah it's funny that they're saying the uk's number one marketplace I don't think you are. I don't, uh, I don't, I just don't think you are. Considering, like, two of us here have never heard of you, and we've been uh, we've been in this game for a little while, so yeah. but they've gone from zero to hero very quickly. If they are, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's. I mean, I understand. I understand that you have to. You know, I understand that you have to promote yourself, but yeah, you know, that's just an, that's just a lie. <laughs> yeah, most people are going to go give over. <laughs> They're not stupid. I don't think anyone would uh, would get that if someone said who's the uk's number one marketplace I don't think anyone would get that wrong unless you've been living <laughs> under a rock i think uh, you'll uh, you'll certainly know what you're talking about uh uk based is probably the key yeah we'll see we'll see how oh yeah maybe uh the number one uk based marketplace well, even that's a stretch because that means they're beating ebay all of a sudden so that, that's still pretty impressive uh anyway <sighs> Moving on. Yeah. Uh, do we have any more questions to answer? Uh, we sort of took quite a lot of time. Uh, I don't. To, yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, I've not. I've not got Des's form up anymore. My phone's okay. gone dead. All oh, right. No worries. I'm just. I'll have a quick look. Uh, Chris. Um, I think uh, Chris mentioned something earlier on in the week about one of the fulfillment centres being. Yeah. Um, slow. Is is that the case? Is are people struggling with um, inbound deliveries right now? Or yeah, apparently Tilbury. Uh, Tilbury was uh, slowing down a bit, but um, I think a few people said they had the same. So obviously a bit of a slowdown at Tilbury for some reason. Maybe they've just had a bit of staff shortage or a bit of an issue there and they've got a bit of a backlog. Can happen. Quite often they'll just, um, let's see, we've got quite a few uh, comments here. Quite quite often they'll just hire a load more casual labour and they'll get through it. But you'll sometimes see like a week of week or two of, of a slowdown and then it gets sorted sorted out tim says yes sent one box into tilbury monday being held back uh just sent another two so now there'll be four boxes waiting so yeah a bit of a slowdown by the sounds of it not like you can do about it really hopefully they get get it sorted quickly and um and get through the backlog it's all all you can do but sometimes if it gets too bad they'll stop they'll stop uh, allowing ups to deliver um but yeah, I mean that's a conversation that we're going to definitely have as we start getting closer and closer. Well, as we start progressing through Q3 and then into Q4, we're definitely going to be having conversations of UPS maybe backing up. I know we've we've had scenarios where you know we're trying to get 40 boxes out of here and UPS are, are struggling to collect everything, and you're having to get additional vans come and pick you up, and then you can only imagine what it looks like on Amazon's fulfillment centers. You know, could you imagine the the amount of inbound deliveries that they've got every single yeah. day? It's just mind blowing. So yeah. that does start to to have an effect, really. And I know we're certainly, you know, we're try getting your your stock in as soon as possible. I know you like to be stocked up well before Q4. Yeah, yeah. Um, sort of September. I aim to have everything I want to have in by September if I can, and then I'm basically on on top up duties after that, ideally um that's that's what personally i like to to try and get that because i don't want to be caught out certainly uh shipping and uh and the fulfillment centers do get under a lot of strain at that time so i don't really want to be caught up in that if i can if i can possibly help it but um yeah chris says my boxes are stuck with ups apparently amazon have to hold up 
have told UPS to hold them. So they've got to that stage, Chris, then yeah, that's often the case. If they get a backlog, they've obviously got a big problem there. And once they get to that stage, they don't want to get any more deliveries uh, because it's just going to kind of compound the compound the issue. So they'll probably tell tell uh, UPS to we don't want any more inbound for a little while. Spend a few days processing whatever backlog there was, and then they'll get on top of it. But uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully, Chris, fingers crossed for you, Chris and Tim, and some of the other guys um, that it will be. Uh, It'll be sorted in in a few days. Fingers crossed. Sean also mentioned he's just put a uh, not just but a while back uh, this week he put a post about um, uh, some chocolates he had and uh, Nestle caramel walnut whips that are um, gone in inactive because of sell by dates. Uh, he said he's had to chuck away three of these that were out to, out of date. Uh, he means he's lost three pounds. Well, I will give you my personal address, Sean, and you can send all the walnut whips directly to my house, and I will uh, and I will <laughs> make sure they are uh, taken care of personally. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, but yeah, just eat them, man. <laughs> I mean, Enjoy, like, John. <laughs> yeah, just... it's a good good problem to have. You know, you, yeah. you lose three pounds or eat three pounds, one way or another. You know, I, I couldn't just I couldn't throw chocolate in the bin. I couldn't do it. If I had chocolate in my hand and a bin it wouldn't it wouldn't come out of my hand my hand wouldn't open <laughs> it's just yeah. the way it is oh, it's just part of the hassle I, you know it's one of the things as you start to build your business more and more it is just part and parcel of the the business model like you are going to have there is going to be a conversation that you talk about when it, when you start talking about waste or these items that are now gone out of date and you've just had i don't know X amount come back that's sort of now been wasted because you maybe got your best best before dates wrong or whatever. There's always there's always the bigger you become, there's always you're going to grow into that conversation. And like I remember doing a um, I remember doing a I think it was a work experience. This is going back like 15 years ago or something now at Intersport. Do you remember Intersport? Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> they they're not around all that much anymore, are they? Um, yeah. This is probably this is probably why they had so much waste around the back. Yeah. Like I couldn't believe it. Like I walked around and like used to they used to have like um, like footballs and stuff. And like these footballs were like twenty pound each or thirty pound each. They were quite expensive footballs because they were like the proper ones. Mm -hmm. And like any time there was like a a slight little mark on them, they just chuck them out. And I just remember specifically thinking I went around the back and I saw this whole like dumpster of like. There's all this gear that's like waste. And I'm thinking to myself, bloody hell, no wonder you're not around much longer now. Yeah. I mean, you think they'd have a liquidation agent or a seconds company or something yeah. like that to say these are sort of like grade B liquidation. Send them all to that because then there can be an eBay seller or someone that will make use of those and yeah. sell them slightly cheaper. And, uh, you know, even, even if they sold them for a pound each, it would still be a, a much better way of liquidating your uh, your wastage than throwing them. They've got to pay for that stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they do, yeah. So the pain, yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, <laughs> Simon says lose three pound or gain three pound. Yeah, I know <laughs> that one. Uh, that is that is the case. I'd force I'd force feed myself just to, just not to lose the three pounds. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean there are always always things to do. I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a few family members that wouldn't mind um, some slightly out of date chocolate. I'm sure it'll take a while before it gets to being properly manky. I've never no don't know anyone that's ever been ill because of bad chocolates. I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean. <clears throat> I don't sell. I don't sell in that in that category personally. But I've had returns in the past with uh, with things. The best the, the best situation is if you get returns and then they mess up the return uh, and uh, the the packaging's uh, broken or something like that. And then you can open a case uh, for for uh, the the deliveries come back to you. They quite often the people that are responsible for when you're having stuff returned, they're not the most careful when the packaging can be damaged and stuff. And then you can get a refund on the stock because they've damaged your, uh, your stuff coming back to you. And then you've just got a load of free stuff. So I've, I've definitely made full use of that over the years of um, shampoo products and various different other things uh, coming back. And it's like, well, may as well make use of it now that the box is totally damaged and they've apologized and refunded me for the whole lot. So um, it was coming back anyway. So uh, happy days. Yeah. I think we had a. I think we had a. I think we had a scenario once upon a time where we had some coffee come back, 
And like, I'd, I think that was about two years ago and I still don't need to buy a coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. This is what happens. This is what happens. I think I ended up, I, end, I think I still got some of that shampoo and that was probably about 18, uh, 18 months ago. So I got, there was a lot coming back as well, but this is what happens. It, sometimes it can work out quite well, but uh, I just want to come back to what I, we skipped over because we were talking about something else. We were talking, somebody made a, quite an amusing uh, comment. Where are we? The nose picker said, I prefer Andy on the left and Kev on the right. We don't have control over that, but I appreciate it. We'll take it as a compliment and anyway. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, sometimes yeah. if we lose connection, sometimes we'll swap sides, which is quite bizarre. But uh, maybe it's who comes up first and uh, that maybe decide the sides. But uh, uh, when we were talking, uh, let's scroll up here and see if I can skim read. Uh, KP, a.k.a. Kev said earlier, uh, me and my partner have got our first ever scan to Moz. Uh, taking massive action every day has really caught me out. <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, we were talking about fatherhood, so uh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally was taking that, massive action. <laughs> literally taking massive action. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets it done, whatever gets it done. Congratulations! I'm uh, I'm I'm very pleased for you. That was the that was the the comment I was trying to find because that was quite amusing. That made me. Uh, yeah, I love that. Well. Yeah, very good. Good work. Well done, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, excellent. All right. So um, I think that pretty much rounds it up. We're up to we're up to an hour again. It always comes up so quickly. We've answered some questions and. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty good. But uh, yeah, Sean's uh, Sean's doing well as as usual. Can't believe how much money he's making. So he's uh, he's a happy chappy. Uh, he's uh, he making huge amounts, taking massive action. So uh, yeah, everyone's everyone's on a winner at the moment. So that's always good news. I and mean, I'm just yeah. interesting to see what superlatives you come up with, Sean, when you get to Q4. Because if you're doing this well, filling up the car every day and getting equal results on Amazon, I don't know what's going to happen in Q4. It's going to be awesome. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to sharing okay. that with you. Absolutely immense, Sean. Mm. You're going to be massively um, expanding. That's what you're going to be doing. <laughs> you know, the, yeah, it's, it's just amazing. I mean, it's a really exciting time. I think we say this every every week. It's it's great. I mean, we've we've been doing this show now since, you know, it's been sort of like 34 weeks. And mm -hmm. we kicked this off like Q4, didn't we, last year? Yeah. So we've, we're, we're going into a time where we've never really had the reseller show, where it's, we're mm -hmm. talking build up to Q4. So it's just a really exciting time. And it's a, it's a great time to, we've got, we've got Prime Day to look forward to and mm -hmm. have lots of different conversations about, um, you know, people may be going on holidays and have a bit of a rest in in, Jan, in July, stroke August before the the mad rush, and it's just a really exciting times. Really, just yeah. I love it. Fantastic. Yeah. It's not a bad way to earn a quid, is it? It's uh, it's pretty good fun. It is. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. All righty, let's wrap it up then. Thanks everyone in the chat for joining us this evening. Thank you if you're watching back on YouTube and thank you for listening on the podcast. We appreciate all of you and the uh, the input that you give us. If you've got any questions, you know where to find us on the uh, Reseller Show Facebook groups here on YouTube or whichever way you want to contact us. We're always happy to hear from you. So uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you the same time next week. See you later. See you later, guys. <laughs>